Hello everyone and welcome to this video about decentralized gaming. Today we're going to look at what's also known as de-gaming and the ERC-1155 token standard and we're going to take a look at the code, we're going to deploy a ERC-1155 token and see how it works. And we're also going to discuss why it's actually good for gaming to use that token, why that token is especially made for gaming. And before we actually dive deep into this token type and how you can use it as a developer, I want to, uh, of course, say that we are very soon, in next week actually, releasing the Ethereum, uh, the Ethereum gaming course, of course. Um, not the smart contract programming, the Ethereum gaming course, where we're going to build decentralized games, basically. We're going to do what I'm about to show here today, but in way greater detail. Here I'm only scratching the surface on decentralized gaming and if you sign up to our, for our yearly plan before the end of January you will get it for the insane price of $299. That of course means access to all of our courses on the Ivalon Tech Academy so check out the link below and become a member today. So what do I actually want to talk about today? Well I want to get into the token type that has become very popular for decentralized gaming. We already had the ERC721 token and that is mostly meant for col collectible style items, NFTs, CryptoKitties, that kind of uh, token, that kind of collectible. Then we had another idea and this came from Engine originally. And we should keep in mind that this is not yet a token standard, it is a proposal so it maybe will become a token standard, but right now it's just a uh, proposal. But I will call it the ERC-1155 token standard. Uh, that is how I'm used to referring to it, so bear with me. That is more aimed towards actual games that will use tokens as inventory. Meaning that if you are investing a lot of your real money into a game, you want to get those items as a token on the Ethereum blockchain so that you for one know that you actually own the token and two can have a secondary market you can do whatever you want with that token and there are pros and cons to this approach of decentralized gaming both for us as players but especially for the gaming companies and maybe that's a topic for another video what i'm going to do today is actually show you the code that i use when i implement erc1155 tokens and how uh, the functions work and how the actual mechanisms work in the smart contract so we're going to check that out so this is the repository of Engine's ERC-1155 standard, if we're going to call it that. And uh, it outlines a series of contracts that is based on sort of the same structure that you see in Open Zeppelin, where we have a base contract, this one here, ERC-1155.sol, and then we build upon that with uh, other functionality that we might have in our own token variant that we create from the standard. So if you want a mintable token, we would make sure to include the ERC-1155 mintable contract as well when we compile our token together. And um, the secret sauce that makes the ERC-1155 token special is of course this double mapping that we see here. This is what actually keeps control of the balances just like what keeps control of the coins in an ERC-20 contract is it the balance mapping where we map from address to balance it's the same thing here, only that now we have one mapping for every token ID. Because in the ERC-1155 standard, we can create multiple token IDs, meaning different types of tokens, within the same contract. So imagine we have a game, right? We have a lot of different items. If you played World of Warcraft or any similar game like that, you know we have tons of different items all in one game. Those could all be created inside here, and they would get a unique token ID. So if you had some sort of special boots, they could have token ID 1. Then if you had some magic armor, they could have token ID 2. And then you could mint uh, different amounts of each and every token type. And that is what this mapping represents. So first you have the token ID, then you get to a new mapping where you input the actual address of the account that you want to check, and then out you get the balance of that specific token ID. And uh, so if, you, if we actually want to create tokens, we first create the token type, which automatically gets an ID. So it just increments the token ID. We start from one, and then if we create different token types, it will continue to increase the number. 
and then we can mint certain amounts of each and every token type. So that is really what sets this apart. And some people have a different a difficulty to understand this double mapping. It's almost like a 2D array. But make sure to study this hard. And you know, if you don't understand it, bring out pen and paper and actually see how this works with these double mappings where I have a mapping that points to another mapping. But I have compiled my own token here, and I'm not gonna compile the token live, but uh, I have uh, created uh, a very long uh, file here where I've compiled the actual code from Engine's GitHub and added some of my own uh, personal preferences to that code. And we're going to deploy that here in Remix and just quickly interact with it. So here we have the deployed uh, contract. And the interesting part is the create and mint function. Because right now we have no tokens created whatsoever and even no token types, no token IDs. That is what we create here when we uh, do the create function. Here we specify the initial supply and then a URI. And the URI is pretty cool as well. That is an external file that we can reference. We can put in a URL really and it po should point to a JSON file which follows a certain standard where we can put like title, description and a bunch of other information about the item in question. So it's sort of like a metadata thing. But that's pretty cool. That's maybe for another separate video. But either way, let's create this token. So initial supply, let's just set it to zero for the sake of it and then leave the URI empty. Let's hit create and we see it uh, passing there. And now, now we have a token, uh, a token ID, we have a token type with ID one. If we check that, we can check the creators function. So if we input the token ID, we'll get the creator of that token type. And that is, of course, my own address. If we input token ID 2, which doesn't exist, of course, we get the zero address. Let's then mint some, uh, some tokens of this token type. So then we would first input the uh, ID. So ID is uh, 1. Then we put an array with the addresses that we want to mint to. And I want to mint to my own address. I'll copy that and put that into there. And then another array with the amount that I want to uh, mint to that address. So let's say I mint 10 and I click on mint and there it is successful transaction. Uh, and now we can check balance off. So I can check the balance of my own uh, address and then uh, token ID because I need to specify both the address that I want to check and the token ID that I want to check the balance off. So let's hit that and see I have 10. If I try to check, you know, a different address the balance will be zero. If I try to check a different token ID, that would also be zero. But uh, if I check the number one, the token type number one, and my address, that would go through the double mapping and return my balance. That was it for this video. I hope that you learned something about the ERC-1155 token today and why, it, uh, and why and how it can be used in games, why it's beneficial to be able to create multiple token types and different types of items and so on within the same contract. So that each game can have one contract where we can define all of the items that we need and then keep track of all of the balances for all of the users. It's a very uh, interesting contract and once you wrap your head around it, it uh, it's fascinating. So I, I encourage you to study this contract. I'll leave the links to the code in the description. And if you want to learn this really deeply and if you want to build your own game from scratch with you know graphics and the front end and actual controls, Together with a token like this, that is what we do in the course, the Ethereum game programming course, which I also link below. There's a special deal that you can get only until the end of January. So make sure to check that out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you dislike this video, you know you can always hit the dislike button. But either way, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.